hello and welcome to this week's special episode of Extra Time. We are delighted to be your host today as we take you behind the scenes of the FA Leadership Academy. I'm Lois, the Community and Engagement Lead for Clubs and Leagues at the FA National Youth Council. My name is Naim Ahmed, Chairperson of the FA National Youth Council and today we will be checking in with mentors and participants and we will be taking you behind the scenes of the FA Leadership Academy Residential. We are now a few days into our FA Leadership Academy journey and the residential. A lot of hard work goes into packing these days full of learning and enjoyment. Naeem, would you be able to tell us a bit about the residential and the programme that is left to follow? Yeah, the FA Leadership Academy residential is the start of the participants learning and development programme. It's a learning development programme that's 12 months long and this residential element is all about personal development and connecting with other people. So thank you for explaining a bit about it. Of course, as we've been seeing, it's not just a residential, it's a 12 month programme. So what stage are the participants currently at and what is next to follow it? The entire programme is based off the social change model and that's really developing the individual and developing yourself, connecting with other people. And we know and we've experienced that this has hugely significant impacts on the local community. Participants are asked to deliver a project to their local football community. Where they're at at the moment is they are really working on developing themselves and connecting the dots so that they can meet other people who can support them and that they can collaborate with along the journey. So what has been your highlight of the programme so far? For me, the highlight of the programme has been just seeing all of the participants walk through the door on Monday morning, seeing the nerves, seeing the anxiousness, but also seeing the real excitement. It has been really refreshing to see how enthusiastic and eager they are to take part in the programme. For those intrigued in future FA Leadership Academies, is there any commonly asked questions that you'd be able to answer for them? Yeah, one thing that we get all the time is why did we not know about this opportunity before? What we really want to do is signpost those opportunities to get involved with the National Youth Council landscape and the ecosystem. Currently, we have the online youth leader volunteering community and that's somewhere anyone can join just by using their fan number. We also ask everyone to find out a little bit more about the Youth Council by looking at the social media handles at the FA underscore NYC. That's the perfect opportunity for you to really find out what's happening in the youth leadership ecosystem and everything with the FA. Thank you, Naeem. We are now going to go over to some of our mentors to ask them a couple of questions about their experiences and future impact of the FA Leadership Academy. We are now joined by two of our mentors on this year's FA Leadership Academy, Anielka and Jasmine. Would you both like to introduce yourself for us? Yep, I'm Jasmine. I am a football development officer from North Riding FA and this year's mentor on Fala. Uh, hello, I'm Anielka. Um, I am also this year's mentor on Fala. Really excited about it. I try to challenge football and sports industry to become more inclusive, diverse, um, and environmentally conscious through working with Football Supporters Association uh, on the Fans for Diversity Guidance Group. Thank you so much, Jasmine and Anielka. The participants today are taking part in activities around leadership and followership. What do you think are some of the benefits that they can get out of taking part in these activities? I think leadership is a very key aspect to being a, a young leader. Going back into their communities with a 12-month project moving forward, leadership is going to be one of the key elements to that that they're going to take forward. I think a lot of people here don't realise they're leaders already. and through the workshops that message gets reinforced and the message that you know w whatever age they're in whatever stage of in their lives they're in they came here they were chosen for a reason and we so see something beautiful in them and I'm hoping that this confidence will grow with the days that come through and they will take that in and see themselves as they are already doing these amazing things and have the confidence to kind of then continue with with their projects so the confidence I think is, is really important here. So Jasmine, you just touched a bit upon the projects and people going out into their communities. A lot of the young leaders' projects may connect with the clubs and leagues that they're within. What advice would you give clubs and leagues wanting to connect and inspire their young leaders to come in through the youth leadership and how important is it to empower these young people? Well, I think it's vitally important to empower these young people. They, they're going to have so many new ideas um, to bring back into their leagues and clubs. My advice to any league or club that has a young leader that really wants to get involved this is tomorrow's workforce 
they're going to be the next people of the league secretaries, the, the club chairman or chairperson. So it's very important that we harness their potential now and ensure that we're developing them to then take on those roles in the future. And for me, I think what's important to emphasize is the um, importance of intergenerational knowledge and how, you know, some of that knowledge from more senior um, staff members in clubs and in leagues can get lost because if it's not passed down and it's also the openness to learn from young people so young people come with so many ideas they're developing so many projects already they've got the energy and the motivation and it's about creating spaces for them to do that um, communicating i think fa leadership program is so important um, the fa youth council and the county youth councils as well so kind of developing that and making sure that there is communication uh, and learning from from what's already you know from the good practice existing and creating resources so maybe a dedicated person that could take that on um, in you know some of some some time capacity um, so that we can actually create a structure around it so enthusiasm and and also kind of building on on practice would be my advice to to clubs and leagues Thank you so much for that incredibly powerful answer. Just as mentors, how do you see yourself supporting the participants for the next 12 months? I think over the next 12 months, it's going to be very much young person led. So if they need kind of their arm holding for the first three months, that's absolutely fine. Uh, it's all about making sure that those young people have the right connections, network and support to be able to make their projects over the next 12 months a success. I completely agree with that. It's about knowing your mentees and kind of identifying what what what's what works best for them. So some might need a little bit more support initially. Some are more independent, um, but it's about checking on them. I think still at any point making sure that we're initiating that contact because some people might be you know losing a little bit on on their motivation or they might have things that um, that they become you know, really involved with. So it's about kind of making sure that that sort of support is around them um, and, and yeah, hoping to connect them with, with, with their passions, developing their skills and, and, and harnessing all the networking connections that they may have um, so that we can see them on the stage uh, next year. And that would be a really proud moment. So yeah, really looking forward to that. Thank you so much to our two amazing FA Leadership Academy mentors. Uh, we look forward to seeing the support that they give to all of the participants throughout the year. Now we are joined by a very special person. We've got Rafe here. Rafe started off his journey with the FA Leadership Academy in 2016 as a participant and has supported many roles on the residential. Rafe, tell us a little bit about yourself. Thanks very much. Yeah, participant at the first FA Leadership Academy in 2016. And since then, I've been really fortunate. I've been on the Youth Council delivery team for a few years, have delivered different workshops that happen throughout the week. Uh, and this year, I've done a workshop yesterday uh, with some fantastic Youth Council members for last year's graduates. And then I'm also looking after our team of mentors, who are obviously incredible volunteers from partner organisations of the FA who give up their time to support the young people through the week of learning they have with us. So you just mentioned your role this year is predominantly overseeing our mentors and helping them. Um, as people have seen and know we are doing a fellowship and leadership activities today. How would you like the mentors to support the young people's development through these activities? The, the mentors are, are hugely important because today is about doing it and other parts of the other workshops and the other days are around them learning about it but actually the mentors now get a chance to see what the young leaders do really well already where they might have blind spots where they can learn uh, and actually give them some really quality feedback for them to take away from the week because they learn a huge amount and grow a huge amount in a week but we really want to maximize the learning and the journey that they go on after this residential and the mentors setting them up with their understanding of leadership and followership and what they do well, where they can develop further. That's a really important part of it. Amazing, thank you so much. Now we're on the third day of the residential and we're really starting to see some character, some passion and the real desire to make a change in the football community come through. What kind of structured support is around the participants so that we really get the best version of themselves? out of the residential? In terms of the mentors specifically, they, 
you know, they, they come in and they are totally invested in these young people for four days. They're checking in with them on how they are as a person, not just how they're getting on with the workshops. Um, but actually also off the back of these four days, because I'm sure, like you've said, Fowler isn't these four days. Fowler's the next 12 months. Uh, and the, the mentors commit to continuing to check in with their, their mentees throughout that 12 months on the progress they're making on their their projects and where they're finding something difficult they work out how they can find another way of doing something or work through a challenge and they also really help connect them to the right people locally that that wider support structure who you know sometimes you you come to Fallon not knowing anything about the people who are working or volunteering in football in your local area and it just takes somebody introducing you to those people and that's something that the mentors and the youth council and the, the family as it gets bigger and bigger can help keep bringing new people into. So as you both mentioned at the start, you've been involved in FALA, FA Leadership Academy since 2016. What has motivated you to continue to work within the youth leadership space and support those coming through? Uh, it's a big question. It's very, very hard to come here and not be motivated to just continue to keep giving. Um, because what you see come back from what you put in is is just incredible. Um, so, like personally for me, a week of being here will give me far more energy than a week of putting my feet up on the beach. It's uh, you know it, you leave with so much positivity because you are around so many people. You're not, you're not the minority in really wanting to develop yourself. You're not the minority in terms of saying things need to change here. That's that's everybody. And it really, really gives you a boost to take back into the work you're doing, the change you're trying to make, uh, to know that you've kind of got those people behind you. So, yeah, I think the football needs more young people and more leaders like this, but also the world does, and I'll continue to do it for football, but I also think that wherever these young people go in society, they'll take the learning and the leadership they get here with them and, and just make things better for people. Perfect. And just any final remarks, what would you say to someone who wants to support the youth leadership space or young people getting involved in football? I think, yeah, I would say you will you will get out what you put in, um, you know, try it, see, see what see what the right space for you to be involved is, because Fala and lots of the other programmes have really varied roles that might suit you at a certain stage. They might suit a certain skill set. Um, so try try different things, see which one works for you. But when you find that thing that clicks, if you then really, really invest what you've got to give into it, you will get a huge amount back in terms of your learning, but you will get so much back in terms of the fulfillment you get from the time and energy you spend with these young people. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Rafe. Absolutely incredible to hear the support and investment that you've given to youth leadership. We are now going to hear more from some participants. I think the activities have been great, but the workshops were also brilliant. I think they like we learn a lot about leadership and about followership as well, which is something that's not really spoken about as much. My favourite thing about today was probably the workshop this morning on like goal setting and motivation and how you can best achieve your goals. So I'll always have a lot of goals I want to do, but I won't get round to them. So setting a big goal perhaps to a year, but then breaking it down and how to get that motivation to get up in the morning. If it's a rainy day, it's cold outside. How do you get that motivation to get up every morning and sort of finding your why as to why and how you're going to do that goal? I'll say that moment for me has really been, I think like the Fiero group today has been quite great. Like to do the activities. We just did an activity out in this like wood area about trying to do these five pathways into 25 different squares and I found that really like interesting to see how different people's brains and opinions worked to kind of get the same goal. I've really enjoyed Fallow so far because of the networking and friends that I've made. Fallow is just brilliant because it, it, it connects people, it brings people from all over the country together and you learn a lot about people's cultures, about the way they've been brought up with football and we all have a passion and a shared interest for football which again you don't really see as much outside of Fallow, so Fallow's great. We are now joined by Adam and Khalid who are Fallow 23 participants. Both of you tell us a little bit about yourselves. 
Yeah, thank you, Naeem. So um, I'm currently a learning support assistant and community coach for a college in Kent called Sports Connect. I also uh, set up my own football team, Sunday League football team called FC Concept, where I'm the chairman and club welfare officer. My name's Khalid and, uh, well, I am a part-time coach at Aston Villa uh, Foundation and uh, also run my own club. And, uh, yeah, we teach on the 18s, partly, mainly, under 11s and 8s. So, yeah, thank you. Sick. So what motivated both of you to apply for the FA Leadership Academy this year? Yeah, so uh, I really wanted to develop myself as a leader. Um, I have aspirations to work in player care and uh, I really thought this would be a great opportunity to sort of network with like-minded individuals and, and, and meet some new people that, that could really sort of help me grow and develop as a leader. Uh, for me, it really come to me as like a spontaneous kind of uh, opportunity. But the more I read about it, the more I was encouraged to join and the more I wanted to join, really. Um, more about development for me now and uh, being here, extremely nice. Tell me about a goal that you set yourself and you feel like you're achieving. Um, was really to accomplish and network, really. Get to know more people, more like-minded people. And it's great, it's great. It's strange in my mind a little bit on the project that I originally come in with. So, yeah, it's great. So, of course, you just mentioned a bit about your goal and an actual target. You've mentioned that you've hit some of your targets already, Adam. Mm -hmm. So now you've hit them, what is your next step in creating more targets to push you further in your development? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, so I really want to try and develop my own personal leadership philosophy. Um, that's something I, uh, from the very first workshop um, with yourself that I, I, I really want to try and, and, and get a bit more clearer understanding. I've got a few elements of it in place, but um, it's still work to be done. So that's a goal of mine is really clearly understanding what my personal leadership philosophy is. Yeah, I feel like um, being at Fala 2023, 20, it's really made me bring a side out to me that, that it's not usually is there, but it's not has been brought out in my local community and whatnot. And it's given me the opportunity to experience different sides to myself and to be very indulged in, in a lot of stuff that like the activities and whatnot that I wouldn't usually be indulged in. Sick, thank you so much. And just final remarks, somebody is, if somebody is watching this, what piece of advice would you give to them if they were kind of intrigued by FA Leadership Academy, whether they're, if they're a young person? Uh, first and foremost, I'd say it's been a great experience and it's completely blown away from my expectations of what I thought it was going to be like. It's, it's completely exceeded them. So if you get a chance, apply, put yourself out there, but why not really? Um, it's, it's totally invaluable, uh, it's completely beneficial. So so yeah, just go for it. Yeah, taking from what Adam said, just join. Trust me, you will not regret it. <laughs> yeah. It's probably been one of the best experiences I've done, really. I've done a lot of stuff, even though I'm only 20, but this has been one one of the top. And um, yeah, join, it can change a lot. It made me it made me made me think a different in a different perspective see life in a different perspective really. yeah it's really really sort of empowering and it, it does it motivates me more to to keep my setting goals keep driving for success and 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 yeah just trying to make it in in football really we've heard from two incredible youth leaders who are taking part in the program this year they are absolutely vital and a pillar in their community i think we need to hear from some more We are now joined by two more participants of this year's FA Leadership Academy, Isabel and Herbert. Would you both like to introduce yourself and how you found the residential so far? Uh, hi, my name is Herbert. Um, I'm 18. Um, I play football for my college. Uh, I, I'm going to be studying sports science for another two years and I'm looking forward to be part of this project. Thank you. I'm Isabel. I go to the Uni of York and I'm the president of my football club. Um, and I, I found it so inspiring, the amount of amazing people we've heard from. Yeah. It's really motivated me to g go on further in football. Thanks, both of you. Now, you've been here for three days and you've seen lots of youth leaders who have actively stepped up and made a change. Yeah. How important is it that young people are involved in kind of leadership roles, but also significant impact within their community i think it's very important because like get getting to know the per the team members is crucial and helping one another to to get to get to the highest standard that they want to be yeah i think 
at the end of the day, the youth leaders here, we're going to be the, the next generation who's going to lead football and hopefully make a big change. So I think it's, it's vital that we make the most of the opportunities that we have and, and try and make a, a change. So Isabel, you've just touched upon the lasting journey from this residential and going out into your communities. How do you plan on taking those next steps to go into your community and enforce a positive impact? So I think I've taken so much from this, but I really want to go and inspire more girls to get involved with football, especially in my in my university. And then a bigger goal is to go and and go into schools and try and just get girls to 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 play football. Really. Uh, for me, like the project, I'm um, like the project that I'm willing to do is uh, navigate adulthood. So twelve or eighteen year olds get get a chance to play football. Like help support them with difficult backgrounds, like trying to navigate the situation they're going through, like with the mental health services provided. But also, um, just to say, the secondary and college students are my target audience, and like trying to that 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 would be my aim. Thank you so much for your time and everything that you're doing. We've heard from some youth leaders who are finding solutions to problems that young people are facing. It's so important that youth leaders take an active role in creating better practice and better informed decision making. And these youth leaders are the perfect example of it. That's all for this Extra Time episode. Thank you so much for joining us. We've spent a great couple of days at the FA Leadership Academy, heard some incredibly inspiring stories from youth leaders who are really passionate and driven to change the game. We hope that this episode has inspired all the young people out there to start their youth leadership journey and empowered the clubs and leagues that these young people are in to support them on this journey. That's all from us. We'll see you next time.